I have some bad news. <laughs> How many people are over 20? <laughs> oh, come on, you're all over 20. Okay, it's all right. Things were great when we were 20. Our knees were good, our eyesight was good. We were at our most healthy, and we were our most cognitively fit. We could remember things very well. We could attend and focus if we thought to do that. <laughs> we could process information quickly. And that is partially in, due to the fact that as we get older, our brain changes. Take a look at the brain on the left. That's a 20-year-old. It's bigger. You can see the difference. The 20-year-old brain is bigger. There's more gray and white matter. Those rivers that run through the brain, they're much more narrow in the young adult brain. The brain next to you, the young adult brain, is that from a healthy, non-demented, 65-year-old, older adult. Maybe some of you in the audience <laughs> have similar brains. You guys are cognitively fit, but your brains are different. They're smaller. There's less, there are fewer neurons, there's less gray matter, there's less white matter. Now what does that mean, really, with regard to our cognitive functioning? Well, just to give you another slice of what your, what, how our brains change, comparing a young adult, again a 20-year-old, to a 95-year-old, non-demented, older adult. You see similar patterns here. You see that there's more dark space in the older adult brain. That is, the older adult brain has more empty space. <laughs> What's going on with that empty space? You'd figure that if there's more empty space, maybe there's less neurons to do all the important things like making decisions like remembering that we have to pick up the dry cleaning, like all the complicated tasks that we have to do throughout our day. It becomes harder as we get older because of these neurological changes. So as we get older, this is an inevitable change. My mother recently had knee surgery. She's a 65-year-old older adult who had her knee replaced. She's doing great. She has a brand new knee and is walking around doing just fine. With our brains, we see changes in gray matter. We see changes in white matter. We see changes in the neurons. There are fewer neurons. The neurons and their features, like the dendrites, the synapses, those are shifting. Neurons are communicating with each other in less efficient and effective ways. We cannot replace the brain like my mother got a new knee. That's not going to happen. So what are we going to do? And how does this manifest itself in our daily lives? Let me, let me ask you uh, a question. I know some of you are under the age of 20, because, uh, so you don't have to answer. But for those of you who are over 20, how often do you have trouble with your memory? You sometimes have trouble with your memory. You've probably met some new people here today. I don't, I, I actually I have a quick question. How many people know my name? <laughs> my name tag's not on, okay? So you try and remember that. We have these memory complaints as we get older. We might all experience these complaints and they do seem to increase we have the subjective experience that they're increasing as we get older. This is one that happens to me often. I, and Provost Harris didn't, couldn't relate to this earlier. I walk into rooms and I don't remember what I went into the room for. <laughs> what am I doing here? But these kinds of subjective complaints, we might not remember and learn names as efficiently. We might not remember where we put things like our keys and our glasses that might be sitting on our head. I often forget where I parked the car. These kinds of problems increase as we get older. And these are the kinds of problems that we study in the lab at Tufts. And what we've done and what we've been looking at, in addition to a number of other researchers in the area of cognitive aging, we've looked systematically to see 
what kinds of problems older adults manifest as a function of normal aging. And we see that older adults demonstrate sensory and motor issues. Their speed of processing tends to slow down. Older adults, that is people over the age of, let's say, 60, have trouble inhibiting irrelevant or inappropriate thoughts. <laughs> they have trouble maintaining attention. Anybody have their mind wander so far in this talk? <laughs> it's perfectly natural. These things happen as we get older. It happens in younger adults as well. So all of these memory complaints and issues increase as we get older. But young adults have them as well. We all experience these kinds of issues. So that leads me to think, well, what's underlying our cognitive functioning? And how do we maintain our cognitive functioning? Well, I asked the question of my husband. I said, hey, hey Joe, what do you do when you're tired? <laughs> and my husband is funny because he never sleeps. He said, I, and he, it was quick on his answer. He said, oh, when I'm tired, I'll just drink coffee. He intervenes immediately on his state, and he drinks a cup of coffee so he can maintain, and he can continue with his daily tasks. However, when I'm tired, nothing can help, so I'll take a nap. But sometimes, we don't have the opportunity to take a nap in our office. So, <laughs> sometimes, coffee is not going to help. What else can we do? We can reduce the demands of the task. After a long day, when we're really busy, had a lot going on, when I come home, my husband, who won't cook for me ever, <laughs> uh, so we, we'll order out. And I'll order some Chinese food. I still eat. I manage to get the sustenance I need, but I've reduced the demands. I don't have to cook. I'm going to show you that older adults do this because they have fewer cognitive resources. They rely on easier kinds of cognitive tasks to engage. But unfortunately, that often results in errors. Errors in memory, problems with decision making, so on and so forth. So there is a need to compensate and get older adults to engage in what I'm going to call more effortful cognitive processing. So, I'm going to run long. I'm basing this idea <laughs> on the idea that we have cognitive resources. We have a pool of resources that we are constantly depleting. Older adults have fewer of these theoretical resources than young adults. But we all have taxes on our cognitive resources. When we're hungry or we're tired, we're taxing our resources. When we're multitasking, we're taxing our resources. When we have particularly challenging tasks to deal with, we tax our resources. And more recently, I've been looking at how anxiety and fear taxes our resources. Now, older adults suffer from a particular anxiety. They worry about their memories. Not surprisingly, because I just gave a talk about how memory is going to decline as you get older. So of course you're going to worry about it. But this is a stereotype that becomes internalized and then negatively impacts older adult memory and performance. What I've shown is in the lab, I can activate the stereotype. I can make it very accessible to older adults. I bring them into the lab and I say, hey, I'm going to give you a memory test. Thank you for coming in. I appreciate that. But you're not going to do so well. You're older, and because of that, your memory is declining. I just, I do that, and I'm horrible. I really am. <laughs> but I, I activate this, this to see what anxiety and fear, how much that's going to consume of their resources, and what's that gonna, what that's going to do to their performance on the, this particular memory task. So I tax their resources, and then I test their memory. And I give them one of my favorite memory tests. And I would do the demonstration with you, but I don't have time. Some of you have seen it, I know. But I would present older adults with a list, list of semantically related words, like rest, bed, nap, peace, drowsy, blanket, 
doze, tired, awake, snooze, yawn, slumber, snore, wake, dream. Now you'll notice that list are all, that, all the words on that list are related to one critical item that wasn't presented, sleep. Sleep is not presented on that list often. People falsely recall sleep as having been presented. But not surprisingly, based on the topic of my conversation, when I activate threat in older adults, when I make them completely aware that their memories are flawed, they are far more likely to falsely recall these critical lures, these related, semantically related words, as compared to their younger adult control counterparts. Why? Because older adults are extracting the gist and using that gist to guide recollection. That yields some success for them, but it also results in errors because they're not carefully inspecting their memories. So can we do anything to compensate? Yes. There is a positive side to this talk. You can reduce anxiety. In the context of the lab, one of the things I've done is I've told older adults, same task. I bring them in and I de-emphasize the memory component. I say, hey, well, actually, this is a study looking at language. Actually, older adults tend to have better language abilities than their younger counterparts. In fact, younger, older adults have more developed vocabularies than their younger counterparts. Now, here's a list of words. Here's a memory test. When I give them that, those instructions and that memory test, they behave just like young adults. Positive. What can you do? There are many, many things that uh, my research has demonstrated. You're laughing, but it's true. First, before you, I, we get to the fun part, don't rush. Everything will take longer as we get older. But if you try and speed through tasks, you won't engage in careful, recollective, and decision-making processes. You'll make errors. Also, stop worrying. Yeah, your brains are shrinking. Your knees are bad and your eyesight's going. It's inevitable. Doesn't mean you can't function. Doesn't mean you can't function just as well as when you were younger. But more importantly, start playing video games. <laughs> Recent research in my lab has shown that when subjects, older subjects, start playing and regularly practice playing first-person shooters, <laughs> really, it's actually having a beneficial effect on a variety of different kinds of cognitive tasks. So, to conclude, we are not going to be able to build a new brain anytime soon. We can grow ears, they're very simple organs. We can't do this with the brain. But what we can do is develop a variety of techniques that train older adults to use the cognitive resources that they have at their disposal. And I will conclude and take questions. <laughs>